fact that words are very specific. And I'm going to go over all of those words for a little bit more clarification. For example, let's start with the last point. Reorganization Act. That's the IRS code. Where else do we hear the word reorganization? We hear it when we talk about bankruptcy, Chapter 11 or Chapter 13. We go into reorganization bankruptcy. What that tells you, it's no accident. The IRS Code, Title 26 in the United States Code uh, volumes, is actually the United States Bankruptcy Reorganization. So the IRS is actually the agency who has been uh, delegated to maintain the reorganization of a debtor in bankruptcy. Uh, no, excuse me, a debtor in possession. What is a debtor in possession? It means a debtor who is in reorganization, who is allowed to retain uh, control uh, or possession of his or her or its assets. So from 1933 on, the United States has been a debtor in possession under reorganization, under the hierarchy of structure that Kelby just uh, outlined and, and framed out for us. So the assets in possession are everything that he mentioned, our cars, our homes, our bodies, uh, the national parks, virtually everything in the North American contiguous 48 states and the other two states of Alaska and Hawaii. Everything has been pledged as collateral. And the long and the short of it is it boils down to one simple formula, which is the creation of a prison that all the people are uh, sentenced to basically life in debtor's prison or debt enslavement. Not only the living people, but the posterity and the descendants, our children, our grandchildren, and on down the line, this is intended, intended to be a perpetual system. So when we talk about words such as land and property, Land is substance. Uh, if for those of you who've heard our calls before, and if you haven't, you can go to the Republic website and find the archive. We'll mention a little later how to find that, uh, the archives of previous shows. We have built systematically over the last six months a basis for understanding many of these uh, elements of how this has all been put in place. We can't do it in one or two shows. We, it takes hours and hours and really months and years to put all this together, but we're trying to frame it out so you have an understanding. So land versus property. Land is the substance that we stand on when we have sovereign capacity and we hold our own law and we have the capacity to retain the fruits of our labor and basically be what the American principle that was established over 200 years ago is supposed to be. Property belongs to the state land belongs to the people or the sovereign. We have been lifted off the land so that we are herded in a virtual containment field in which we are bonded as pledge surety to that perpetual debt system. So we have another term that actually Kelby didn't mention, but we're all familiar with real estate. But is that real estate? I used to grow, I grew up thinking, well, that meant it's real, it was substance. But in fact, real estate is the opposite, opposite of that. It is derived from the Latin and the Romance, uh, Roman languages, such as Spanish and otherwise, where we use the word real, which means royal. It means the royal estate. So we are only tenants on the land. We are licensed to have a limited use, and everything we pay as fees, such as property tax, annual renewal of our vehicle licensing, driver's license fees, business license fees. These are use taxes. Why? Because we don't own it. We're given a limited use. And when you study it from an eagle's eye view, you see how the whole system churns and churns and the wealth is created by the people and siphoned up and taken away until we are literally dispossessed from the land. So the key point is really this. Okay, that's the problem. What is the solution? The solution is that we have re-inhabited the lawful authority of the republic, and that too has been described numerous times from different angles. If you go into the archives, you will hear it very systematically laid out how we have done that. 
the fact that we are here today on this phone call, the fact that we are uh, approaching a year and a half now that we have inhabited or re-inhabited the Republic, and other than a few minor situations and some serious tragic losses that we have incurred, the fact is that by and large, in totality, the Republic stands sovereign and whole, is held by the people who stand in Republic, in the re-inhabited Republic, and we have not been bothered, other than collateral attack, undermining kind of things, people who don't know better and some people who do, who have been throwing slings and, and barbs at us, but they've become really nu nuisances. And we are moving systematically forward. There are things that are so exciting that are emerging that we have a fully inhabited and fully um, retained office holding at every level of the county, the state republic, and the national level of Congress, Senate, and um, uh, the House, uh, national bodies uh, such as the president's cabinet, uh, state republic governors, all of the rest of it. And we have not been touched. And systematically, people are waking up. They're stepping into this republic. And the only thing that stands between us and the capacity to fulfill the destiny that we're talking about on these calls is you, the people who are listening, and all the people out there who are not listening that could be introduced to the fact that we are here and it is for the American people. And we have the most unique opportunity in all of history because there is no other jurisdiction on this planet that can return to the kind of control of the law and the land and the monetary system and the economic models other than the American people. And the world's people are looking at us because they're saying, my goodness, these American people are so deep asleep and they have no clue what's going on all around them. When are they going to wake up? And they're all standing there just praying and reaching out their hands to help us wake up, slap us in the face, get us out of bed and say, come on, Get out there. Take back your republic and get get it moving forward. There's only one thing required, which is why we are here on these calls, is the people. The people need to stand up, and they need to step into this republic. And we all out there who have different views and different ego positions, we've got to stop bickering and dividing ourselves and becoming our own worst enemy. If we don't stop doing that, we are going to undermine this most unique historical opportunity. So this is where we're at. You know, one other point I just remembered, the word resolution. Remember, Kelby, you said resolution for a Senate act. We also talk about something called House Joint Resolution when both houses of, uh, of Congress make a joint resolution. But where do we hear that word resolution? There's no, no other place other than a corporation. A board of directors makes and writes corporate resolutions. A de jure lawful government established acts and statutes at large. This Congress is only capable of doing corporate resolutions. And as Kelby said, this corporation is not even owned by those people. They're their middle managers, but they are taking huge value in terms of what he also mentioned as far as personal gain. They're not servants to the people. They are there for personal gain. They take the bribes in uh, acceptable, politically correct form now. They don't give them gold and silver under the table. They just allow them to partake in the booty of the piracy that's taking place. The people in Washington should be ashamed of themselves because they know what they're doing. They do. We can't, we can't say forgive them. They know not what they do because they know what they're doing. And if they're listening to this call, you people should be ashamed because you, are, you have sold your souls for a few pieces of silver, and it will come back on you. We have no doubt. We don't even have to think in any other way than, you know, God in the universe and all that is right and just in all of creation, it will bring the payment back to you. So if you hear this, wake up. 
you can help us. You can start moving that corporation into a neutral position and allow the people to step forward with this republic because that's all we need to do to heal this land, heal this country, and literally lead this world back to a state of freedom and balance and godly creation and everything that should be right and just on this planet. And that's where we're at, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. So we invite you all to step into the Republic. Thank you very much. Good night. Gentlemen, as I hear hear you talk, um, I'm, I'm struck with how far we've come in the last 18 months. Kelby, to hear you lay out uh, over the last couple of weeks from 1860 to 1944 to uh, give some marker points and to have that like anyone who would like to listen to these calls can take it and write them down and then do their research. Boy, when we started this, we didn't have all those pieces. We didn't have all those pieces uh, nailed down. And to hear it now, it's so exciting. It's so exciting for me to see that Two things. One, you've laid out very beautifully, uh, Kelby, over the last two weeks, the uh, incremental loss of our freedom, the incremental loss of the document that we all hold so uh, precious, and that is the Constitution. And we've just watched here how little by little the rudder of the ship of state has been turned. And what's so exciting about where we are today is that they say something as, uh, I don't know if it's a positive uh, motivational thing, though. They, you say, oh, I'll see it when I believe it. But the truth is, without a vision, a people perish. And you just created that vision here, and we've been creating that over the last 18 months, clearly. And it's now a matter of when I believe it, I will see it. And for all those listening to this call, it's coming to the point. All of you are watching the news seeing where our nation is going, seeing the, the rapid, rapid decay of the liberties that we've known only in this generation to see it so completely turned around. And now it's like, here is the thread. Here is the vision. It's been laid out, and we will continue to lay it out systematically. And you have the opportunity now to say, okay, what do I believe? What am I willing to believe? Where am I going with this? And Is this something which fits with the insanity that we're seeing coming across to us over the managed news? Tell me in your home, if you increase the debt, is that going to help you pay your bills? Is that going to help you live within the means that you have from from the breadwinners in your home? It doesn't work, does it? It didn't work in our house. We had to take some cuts. Look at the federal government and the arrogance that these folks are doing that makes them think that they can hoodwink us into believing that they raise the debt ceiling and they're going to fix this problem. It is just such a dog and pony show, such an absolute lie, such an abomination, and I'm so excited that we're starting to get the, you know, that, uh, uh, that steam engine, that train, you remember, that used to make its way across the West? We are moving west. It is on the road. It's exciting to see what's going on here. Yeah. I I fully agree with you, Robert. Um, You know, when we first started, I remember Ken and I uh, were cornered by a guy on a phone call, you know, about uh, the, the, uh, uh, the 41st Congress where they created the District of Columbia. And he asked us a poignant question. He said, well, it doesn't say there that the United States, it says it incorporated that as a, uh, a corporation, that, that District of Columbia area has a, a corporation. Um, and then here, you know, as, as things roll out, you know, we find out where in the code under uh, the UCC where it says the United States exclusive jurisdiction is the District of Columbia. So, you know, people say, so what does that matter? Let's explain that, Ken uh, and, and Robert, a little bit to people. What does that matter why that is their exclusive jurisdiction? Well, number one, why did they even need to create a sovereign territory for themselves and and separate it from the rest of the land of the Union? Was it because their acts in 1871 through 
present day, we're going to be so notorious, so devious, that we would stand up and ultimately revolt against them, but we could 